and they're ready to surrender. आईएनए के बागी फौजियों पर अंग्रेज देशद्रोह का मुकदमा चलाएंगे। उन तीनों के बचने के चांसेस कम हैं। ये कोई आम केस नहीं, कोर्ट मार्शल है। बोला भाई एक केस आप कांग्रेस के लिए नहीं, सुभाष बोस के लिए लड़ी। लुटेनेंट गोबाक सिंह डिलन, कैप्टन शाह नवाज खान, कैप्टन पी के सेगा, सेक्शन 41, वेजिंग वॉर अगेंस्ट द किंग you are charged with murder. Do you plead guilty to the charges read out? If there is a force to fight for the freedom of freedom, then its name is Azad Hind Fawj. The safety, honor and welfare of your country comes first, always. British Indian Army hand you over to the Japanese Imperial Army. Hindustan and the Angrezes were broken down and broken. If something is up and down, the country will be a problem. Now, the people will not leave any English. Night and night, you will be able to stop the freedom of your country. The English officers have not been able to do our freedom. So, what can they be able to do our freedom? Today, the Hindustani force has its own real purpose. The freedom of Hindustan. You give me the blood. I will give you the freedom. ये मुकदमा पूरी इंडियन नेशनल आर्मी का है क्योंकि हमने वो दिन देखा है जब हमें ऐसा लगा था कि हमने हिंदुस्तान को वाकई आजाद कर दिया देश की आजादी की लड़ाई कोर्ट में लड़ी जा रही है और इस वक्त पूरा देश एक साथ तैनात है This trial and its judgment shall be remembered throughout history. Hello and a warm welcome to another edition of Ground Report, your one-stop window for the stories coming from the grassroots. This program also focuses on stories that shape the destiny of the nation. Our today's focus is the historic goods and services tax, a 40-year journey to the common market which has just come into effect. How will it usher in the reforms? Will it be beneficial for people like you and me? And the often asked questions, will the prices increase and will it lead to inflation? We'll try and answer all these questions, but let's take a look at what GST is all about and what will be the impact on the national economy. Ravinda Shoran with the top story. At the stroke of the midnight hour, Modi government rolled out India's biggest tax reform at Parliament's historic Central Hall. The GST or goods and services tax ushering in a new era in India's tax scenario. GST may be a destination tax, but for India it will begin altogether a new journey. The old India was economically fragmented. The new India will create one tax, one market, and for one nation. जो रास्ता हमने चुना है, जिस व्यवस्था को हमने विकसित किया है, यह किसी एक दल की सिद्धि नहीं है, यह किसी एक सरकार की सिद्धि नहीं है, ये हम सब की सांझी विरासत है। Replacing a slew of indirect taxes with a unified tax, GST is set to dramatically reshape the country's two trillion dollar economy. And here is how: government says GST is a single tax to promote trade and industry. GST replaces multiple tax levies from the manufacturer to the customer. GST subsumes a variety of central and state levies with a single tax like VAT, service tax, sales tax, excise duty, etc. GST slabs are divided into four categories of 5, 12, 18 and 28 percent. GST would make life more efficient, more smooth, more fast for a businessman or a person who is trading or manufacturing. Basically. GST would increase the GDP of the country and it would increase growth. 
The government and financial institutions claim the GST will bring about tax socialism in India and will control inflation by bringing about uniformity in taxes across India. However, it will also lead to a hike in prices in states where taxes are lower than GST rates. Short term may थोड़ी बहुत दिक्कतें जरूर आएंगी पर मीडियम टू लॉन्ग टर्म में ना ये सिर्फ बिजनेस के लिए बेनिफिशियल है परंतु कीमतों के हिसाब से भी जो है कंज्यूमर्स के लिए बेनिफिशियल होगा और टैक्स बेस के हिसाब से लिए सरकार के लिए बहुत बेनिफिशियल GST has opened up national markets for the farmers who are currently bound to the local markets due to complicated tax structure. Now with GST, movement of goods across states becomes hassle-free as the octroi tax levied crossing the state borders will be abolished. Some experts believe that GST will also generate employment in the days to come while others have their doubts. GDP is expected to increase by 2%. If GDP increases to this level, it means common man would have salary increments firstly there would be salary increments there would be more job opportunities unemployment would be reduced gst ka humne mool bhavna ka swagat kiya tha parantu jo vartman mein gst ki gst council ki 17 baithakon mein jo uska prarur hamare samne aaya hai wo ye kehta hai ki ye ek jatil vyavastha hai unchi daron wali vyavastha hai जिसके कारण महंगाई बढ़ जाएगी उपभोक्ता उसको सहन नहीं कर पाएगा स्मॉल ट्रेडर्स अक्रॉस इंडिया हैव बीन प्रोटेस्टिंग अगेंस्ट जीएसटी फियरिंग पनिशमेंट फॉर फेलियर टू अबाइड बाय द न्यू टैक्स नॉर्म्स व्हिच दे फील इज टू कॉम्प्लिकेटेड द गवर्नमेंट हैज ट्राइड टू अलाय देयर फियर्स सेइंग दैट जीएसटी विल ओनली गिव एन एडेड इंपेटस टू स्मॉल एंटरप्रेन्योर्स विद रविंदर शोरान साइनिंग ऑफ फॉर ग्राउंड रिपोर्ट So it's one nation one tax concept which is going to drive the wheels of the economy and initial hiccups are bound to happen but people say that with time the things will get smoothened out but remember the tax officials have been working tirelessly for the last 2 years to put together a humongous task from IT preparedness to the way the taxpayers and the businessmen are going to merge themselves into the new ecosystem but let's find out what are the kind of preparations which the government has made on the ground kriti mishra takes you to one of the gst suvidha centers which is emerging as one of the biggest backbones of gst take a look india has rolled out the biggest tax reform since independence and the government has set up gst suvidha kendras across the country to really avert the teething troubles and we are at one of such centers set up here at dehradun let's find out more This is the help desk created where officials are trying to answer the queries of the people and joining me is the joint commissioner of commercial taxes of Uttarakhand. So the biggest question is are the tax administrators ready because you've been dealing with VAT till now and also questions are being raised on the IT preparedness. Yes certainly I can say I can say you know GS successful of GST depend on basically IT. So how state is responding to IT preparedness? I can tell you for last 6 months we are working very hard to get our IT uh, sections I mean uh, hardware network connectivity every kind of things our, our every office is connected and on 1st of July we have created state officer as a user in system and some of the officer has been assigned a role of registration authority we are prepared to address GST in successful manner Right. Also joining me is the nodal officer for training for GST for Uttarakhand. Ma'am, how have you planned to reach out to small traders and small businessmen? See, besides training of our officers and doing workshop, we have done more than 350 workshop in all over Uttarakhand. Even we gone to the block level also. Besides this, we Uttarakhand came up with a new concept that is GST Mitra. We are training GST our unemployed youth as GST Mitra to handhold the small traders. Uh, basically what we are doing we are uh, giving them practice on hands on trainings for online services so that they can help out the our small traders to uh, avail their online services like uh, return filing and registration so endeavors are there to reach out to the msme sector and here we can see that gst booklets have been prepared to actually disseminate information about gst and joining me here is one of the persons who's come here for his queries sir kya kya samajh mein aaya aapko gst ke bare mein aur kya kya dikkatein hain aapki ji ab to sabko samajh mein aa raha hai jaise sir bata rahe hain registration mein bas yahi lag raha tha ki matlab return ka file karenge ya 
जी एस टी कब भरना है टू कब भरना है तो सर इस चीज़ को क्लियर कर रहे हैं आपको लगता है सब कुछ स्मूथली हो जाएगा जी बिल्कुल अब अच्छा लगेगा so the government is trying to ensure that people understand the nuances of gst and the roll out of this tax reform becomes smooth reporting from dehradun with camera person ashwini kumar i'm kriti mishra for radhya sabha television so how has the nation woken up to the new economic reality of the goods and services tax let's find out what the businessmen in dehradun had to say take a listen India has woken up to a new economic model and a new tax regime and joining me are industry doings of Uttarakhand to articulate their views on GST so goods and services tax or good and simple tax this is a new experiment it will take time to form the result mera ek sher arth hai ibtida hai ishq hai rota hai kya aage aage dekhiye hota hai kya apprehensions really of the industry and what are the problems that you foresee well industry is first and foremost let me congratulate the government on such a courageous step there is not many apprehensions as i would call it but there is this confusions you need to clarify more much more clarification is required as of today is they have to open some suvidha centers or something especially for the people who do not have access to it mm -hmm. cannot afford chartered accountants छोटा किराने वाला दी रोड साइड वेंडर्स दे शुड हैव अ टेन लाइन फॉर्म फॉर देम मे टू मे फिल इट इन हिंदी इंग्लिश और वट एवर गो टू दुविधा सेंटर सिंपली पार्क इट देयर एंड ऑन अ नॉमिनल फाइव टेन रुपी पेमेंट इट शुड बी पोस्टेड ऑन देयर बिहाफ अदरवाइज इफ दे आर पुट टू गोइंग थ्रू द इंटायर ड्रिल ऑफ वन रिपोर्ट एवरी टेन डेज एंड थर्टी सेवन इन अयर दे आर गोइंग टू हैव अ टफ टाइम सो अदरवाइज आई थिंक द इंडस्ट्री Right now, it's a state of confusion, but the industry is looking up to it. As far as few omissions and commissions are concerned, uh, within few months, the government is expected to adopt a very benign approach. Well, the government has been considerate. Uh, let me congratulate the government. It is well done than said. Uh, it's a humongous task what the government has done. Uh, from the Red Cross point of view, we have been. Uh, uh, representing to the government we have uh, put in a request that for affordable housing segment the gst rate should be fixed at 6 so that it really gives a push to affordable housing when the government's mission for uh, mission, uh, housing for all by 22 has to be achieved so let it be that simple as that you represent industry chamber you know big corporate houses business lobbies they can afford to have fleet of cas but what about small vendors what about small traders and in fact uh, micro enterprises and there are also questions being raised on the it preparedness of it see gst regime is uh, uh, one of the initiative of the government towards ease of doing business and uh, that definitely for the micro and small scale uh, enterprises it is going to be easier as far as taxation is concerned because earlier there were multiplicity of taxes the people were not aware of many things they come to know as a you know things like small enterprise he is not educated mm -hmm. you know he uh, how he will not know multiplicity of taxes the implications and all so he has to consult the professionals for that but over a period of time when gst is in place i think small enterprises won't require any professional consultancy right that is one thing and i am sure given the scale of uh, you know the system adoption in the in india that is humongous and uh, definitely there will be challenges and i think government is ready with that they are aware of it that uh, there will be lot of fine tuning required there are concerns of the industry as of now there is utter uh, you know confusion in terms of uh, the kind of uh, how they are going to implement it how they are going to adopt the uh, taxation new taxation system and there are issues related to the rates of taxes and we are we are very hopeful that this academically good practice uh, good regime will definitely percolate into a practically you know uh, viable uh, regime of taxation So it's a new economic environment with which the taxpayers and the government have to deal with in the coming days. But for the last so many days, we've seen there has been a palpable paranoia and trepidation amongst the people. Let's find out what Union Finance Minister Arun Jaitley had to say in our exclusive interview for our flagship program, To the Point. Take a listen. 
why is there a certain paranoia which which people you see, see protests are, coming from certain quarters you that, see, you know there are two reasons one is the fear of unknown okay second is that some people had in the existing system developed a vested interest okay. because it was easy to evade gst as a more efficient system is not so easy to evade and therefore there is a fear that i was getting away without payment in the earlier occasions today it's not going to be possible a more efficient system will therefore ensure compliance and compliance will mean accountability in the long run if you see it's a patriotic duty to pay your taxes are you not supposed to pay for the army are you not supposed to pay for the police are you not supposed to pay for all the uh, infrastructure that you enjoy in this country the country needs resources governments in the center and the states are being run by borrowing money from people and on the other hand you have a situation where people who can afford it and should be paying taxes are not paying taxes and the honest man who's paying taxes is not only paying his own share of taxes taxes but is also paying the share of the the, the non compliant so that's the situation in the country now we are a large country with 130 crore people of these 17 taxes which are being merged into one how many out of these 130 crores were paying these indirect taxes just just take a guess 80 lakhs not even 1 crore and therefore in the long run the num the your tax base has to increase that only indicates the level of non compliance like uh, finance minister of west bengal amit mitra says that uh, it's going to hamper the cause of uh, the small and the medium sized traders how will it you see when people have lost all arguments against gst they go and rely on the small up to 20 lakhs there is no tax no registration okay. up to 75 lakhs if you are trading you pay 1% if you are manufacturing you pay 2% up to 75 lakh turnover and if you are beyond 75 lakhs then i am afraid you are not so small <laughs> then you can afford to get somebody to help you how to put an entry into a computer all you need is one entry in the computer and therefore west bengal and some other friends must make up their mind are they for gst are they against gst the big concerns which are coming out that you know the it infrastructure is not ready there will be billions of invoices which will be uh, you, you know see, uploaded see i think it's very clear these are uh, all fears of unknown you already have something close to 65 to 70 lakh firms which have registered themselves so the it infrastructure is doing the registration the returns are now to be filed for the first month on an extended date up to 15th september the it experts have told me that they are fully ready but in an operation of this kind where you have crores and crores of uh, vouchers which are to be matched you can have some hiccups but then technology has its own strength it finds its own solutions and then within a matter of hours those hiccups are removed on in the it structure i'll i'll quote what mr amit mitra only said that we could have rolled out gst in september at least more trials could have See, happened I mean, uh, the, this is not my decision this is the decision of the gst council a unanimous decision to roll it out on the 1st of july and mind you whether you do it on 1st of july or the 1st of september the hiccups will be the same If GST is about economic freedom it's also about the political positioning of the BJP which perhaps could reap rich political dividends out of this historic move but for people like you and me what are the normal queries it's filing returns pricing jobs inflation upendra gupta who is the main man behind the legal and the policy framework of GST decodes the unified tax for you take a listen if you say that the people have been aware the businessmen also are quite aware of what is going to happen why is there a palpable paranoia in the air as to you know there's, there's a feeling that people have no idea what the gst is all about no they are aware but i i believe that as a human being we are always resistant to change so this is one one reform 
we can't call it a, you know, only the tax reform, it is business reform. The way the business is done in our country for last 70 years is going to see a sea change. So probably the feeling of unknown is there, feeling that what would happen, that is more there. As I said earlier, the law and rules were put in public domain, the, the feedback of the trade has been taken into account. So I, just after the initial, maybe little bit of this, uh, uh, what the little bit of problems or little bit of feeling of unknown, the things would get settled down and people would start, you know, normally. Uh, there are a lot of doubts also about the fact that it's going to set off a chain of benefits, you know, r starting right from the wholesaler to the manuf manufacturer, wholesaler, consumer, the, the producer, everyone. So can you just explain as to how these benefits are going to be passed at every level and what is going to be the end result? Today, as you are aware, on the sale of goods or provision of service, there are large number of taxes. The tax chain is broken between the central tax administration and the state tax administration. Right. The central taxes are not allowed as input tax credit to for payment of the state taxes and vice versa. All these taxes are getting subsumed. They are getting they are getting subsumed in a single tax called GST. So right from the stage of the manufacture or from the import till the goods or services is the final consumer. The tax rate would be same, the procedure would be same, the full credits would be available. So okay. over a period of time as we grow, what I find, what I, I can say is that the taxes which are being paid at the time of import or at the time of manufacture because the full input tax credit would be admissible without any uh, blockages etc. The ultimate sale price to the ultimate consumer is going to be lower. There is a lot of uh, myth about return filing that one has to file three returns per month. I would like to clarify this to the for the benefit of the viewers. Of course, many viewers would be from the trade and industry also. Right. That this is a myth. This is this is not correct because what is required to be filed is only the sales detail in the by the tenth of the following month. The rest, the purchase details, the main return gets auto populated from the from the first part of the return okay. and very few details are required to be submitted by small taxpayers. In fact, they are smaller taxpayers who are selling within the state, they are required to, file, they are required to give only summary of the sales made by them, not even the invoice details. But, but an essential prerequisite uh, to get updated under GST of course is that you have to go 100% online. Uh, when you have to you know, uh, take into account the tax credits, the audit reports and everything, then obviously it's an added investment for the firms. So how do they brace up uh, with, with the new regime? See, the benefits of electronic system far outweigh the cost which it will have. Because now everything would be electronically done, the interface between the taxpayer and tax authorities would be reduced substantially. Okay. So the problems of harassment, the problem of corruption will go away because everything is being done electronically. And then it also acts like a self-policing mechanism. Uh, Gambit, how do the small-time, uh, medium-sized traders uh, who have always been dealing with cash, how are they going to, uh, you know, uh, coordinate themselves in this ecosystem? So even if you are allowed to deal in cash, you will record those transactions in your books of accounts. There is no different treatment in GST, whether you deal in cash or whether you deal through electronic mode of payments and receipts as long as you are reporting everything. Okay. In the days to come, we'll try and get you many more explainers on GST. Time for us to slip into a short break. On the other side, we get you the ground reality of Swachh Bharat Mission. Welcome back, you're watching Ground Report and time now for our regional window. Swachh Bharat Mission is three years old. Mindset of the people is gradually changing. Hygiene and cleanliness, especially as far as the garbage collection is concerned, has improved drastically. But despite the high profile endorsements by the politicians, film stars and the government's drive to build toilets, there are many pockets across the country where Swachh Bharat Mission seems to exist only on paper. Today we take you to a village in Uttar Pradesh which has been declared open defecation free. Find out the reality here. 
This village in Itawa district of Uttar Pradesh boasts of being an open defecation free village. But a walk around this rural belt belies all claims of Swachh Bharat and Clean India. Under the Swachh Bharat mission rural households who have built toilets can request for a reimbursement of 10 to 12000 rupees. Residents of this village allege that they have to grease the palm of the sarpanch to the tune of 2 to 4000 rupees and then only their request is taken into consideration. अब जी ये प्रधान और अधिकारियों की वजह है अपने अपने लोगों को दे रहा है 2000 रुपए में 2000 किस तरीके से लेता है क्या कह रहा है पहले एडवांस में 2000 दो आपकी पहले की बनी हुई है तब भी पास होगी 12000 मिलेगा Despite the bribe villagers say they are not sure whether they will get their reimbursement or not because many wealthy families who already own toilets have become the beneficiaries of the government fund provided for the rural areas उनसे कहा कि साहब इस मोहल्ले में घर में देखिए किसके में लैटरिन बनी है किसके में नहीं बनी है उन्होंने कोई बात नहीं सुनी वो बोले ही नहीं हमने कहा साहब रात के 8:30 8:30 बजे कहीं मोहना होता है साहब ओ हो भी रहा है तो ये जनता आपके पीछे घूम रही है तो ये बात कह रही है इनकी तो कुछ सुनो लेकिन डीएम साहब ने कुछ नहीं सुना अबाउट 20 विलेजेस इन इटावा डिस्ट्रिक्ट हैव बीन डिक्लेयर्ड ओपन डेफिकेशन फ्री ओडीएफ मिशन ऑफिसर्स हैव इवन सबमिटेड देयर कंप्लीशन रिपोर्ट्स टू द गवर्नमेंट बट द विलेजर्स से दे स्टिल डेफिकेट इन द फील्ड्स and the bushes is samay hamara jo target tha humne 16 gaon odf online goshit kar diye jo state se ho gaye hamare char gaon hamare janpad se ho gaye total hamare 20 gaon wale odf goshit kar chuke hain 65 ka hamare paas prastav aa gaya hai unka hum satyapan kara rahe hain the most important objective of swachh bharat or clean india mission is to end open defecation forever in all villages by october 2nd 2019 the 150th birth anniversary of mahatma gandhi Since its launch in 2014, 2.4 crore toilets have been constructed under the Swachh Bharat Mission and 15.04 lakh under the MNREGA across rural India. The rural household toilet coverage has increased from 42% at the start of Swachh Bharat Mission Gramin to 55.34%. The numbers on the Swachh Bharat Mission look impressive on paper like the example of these villages in Itawa. but they also show a complete lack of supervision and verification to collect national data with bureau inputs signing off for ground report remember india has an estimated 600 million people who defecate openly according to a study by the united nations obviously it's not going to be an easy task to make india open defecation free moving on now to bhopal where bumper onion crop has spelt misery for the farmers instead of joy Tons of onions are lying rotten in rain due to lack of storage facilities. While the farmers are demanding more storage facilities, government says there is just a few hundred bags which have got ruined. Find out the reality. This is Bhopal's Karnod market where farmers are racing against time to sell their onion crop before it rots in the rains. A bumper crop this year and a lack of storage facilities have exposed tons of onions to the ravages of the weather. The administration claims it has provided 9 out of 15 storage sheds it has for onions, but clearly it's not enough and the farmers have nowhere to go. Sabha ka pyaaj bheeng diya, palle la ke dali, raat ko aake pade the na ki jagah raat bhar machcha khaye, koi pyaaj rakhne ki koi vyavastha nahi ho, aaj mana kar diya ki na pyaaj nahi tolega. The farmers complain that instead of buying their crop the administration is leaving them to fend for themselves. Ye dikkat hai pani chhani ki aur ye tulai ki ab aaj malum padi ke wo usse padwari se likhwao pehle se boli nahi. Abhi ka number aaya ab tulega kab kya hoga? This year Madhya Pradesh produced 32 lakh metric tons of onions but the total storage capacity it has doesn't exceed more than 3.1 lakh metric tons which is less than even 10% of the produce As a result a large quantity of onions are lying out in the open the administration claims it has bought over 50000 quintals at 220 rupees each and distributed it to various districts and fair price shops However thousands of quintals still remain getting spoiled by the rain 500 se 1000 ke bore honge 
जो बारिश में भीग गए हैं क्योंकि शेड में खुला हुआ है जल्दी से जल्दी इस प्याज का डिस्पोजल कर दे रहे हैं शासन के भी निर्देश हैं यहाँ पे अभी ओपन ऑक्शन लगाया गया था जिसमें दो सौ बीस रूपए मैक्सिम बोली आई विद मॉनसून रेन ऑलमोस्ट एट दीक इन मध्य प्रदेश दिचुएशन विद ब्यूरो इनपुट साइनिंग ऑफ ग्राउंड रिपोर्ट So you've seen the reality yourself. There's a big gap between what the farmers say and what the government claims. Time now to wrap this edition of Ground Report. Don't forget to send us your feedback at feedbackgroundreport at gmail dot com. If at all you feel that there is an issue in your area or in your region which has been left unaddressed, RSTV will be right there with the cameras. Goodbye and thanks for your time.